Okay, we look at our full study. 23rd video. 163 when we begin today. 1 Corinthians 1.18. 163 fools, foolish, fool. The only thing I, I regret, I didn't do folly. But here we go. 1 Corinthians 1.18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which is saved it is the power of God. Let this verse not be confused with modern Bibles. You've got to have a King James Bible. King James Bible says, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. There are Bibles on the market that say the preaching of the cross is foolishness. There's a big difference and modern Bibles are foolish. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Now, let me take my account. Let me speak about what I know. Now, if you knock on doors, you pass out gospel tracts, you do one-on-one, -on -one, you can relate to what I'm relating. I try to go, Lord willing, once a week, and I preach to people at Daytona Beach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ on the street. And when I preach the cross that Jesus Christ suffered and died, according to scriptures, and was buried and arose again the third day, according to the scriptures, if they die without Christ, without receiving Christ, was rejecting Jesus Christ, having heard that Christ Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, that nothing else will get them to the Father, but Jesus is the only way to the Father, and they continue to disbelieve in Jesus and count their religion or whatever they're doing not to put their faith in Jesus, which is being preached to them and taught to them. And when they die and go to hell, it's foolishness. Absolute foolishness. You've heard. And they'll stand the great white throne judges. They better tell God, well, I never knew. I did. And they might call up the preacher that they heard. When a man hears the gospel, the true gospel of the Bible, and perishes, it's too late. It's done. You've done your foolish deed. 1 Corinthians 1.20 Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? There will be men and women, doctors and PhDs and degrees and diplomas all over the walls, the diplomas, you know, all kinds of graduations. And you've got the smarts to do nuclear. You've got the, the smarts to do doctoring. You've got the smarts of uh, mathematics and science. And you've got the smarts of history and archaeology. You've got all the smarts. And yet, if you were to die without Jesus Christ, what we just read in verse 18, you're a fool. You're a foolish. Scholarship degrees of college and all education, universities and institutes and what have you of education realms are not going to get you out of hell. And you can't display your knowledge and intelligence in hell. It ain't going to do you no good. If a pharmacist hears that Jesus only saves, if you give a man a of the pharmacy a gospel tract and he reads all the way through about the saving grace of Jesus and he rejects that he can go off into hell being foolish and have all knowledge of medications and pills but ain't gonna do him no good in hell you can have a man who's a firefighter experienced firefighter rescuing and everything like that and, and climbs it from whatever the low degree of a firefighter is he can to be chief of the fire department, chief of the city. And someone present to him the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and he rejects it. 
all his knowledge of firefighting, all his knowledge of rescue will not be any good to him in hell burning because there's no water and there's no one to rescue. The rescue was here when you heard the gospel and received the, Jesus Christ as your Savior before you got saved. I mean, before you died, before you went off to hell, to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. God says to us, you're a fool to go to hell. That's how God looked at people in hell. You're a fool. I'm glad I'm not this fool. So 1 Corinthians 121. For after the, that, in the wisdom of God, God's wise, the world by wisdom knew not God. All right, let's, let's stop right there for a moment. We're not going to get too many done. Because this all seems to be one realm here. All right. Wisdom knew not God. All the education again in being educated, be taught. That evolution to them is a fact. Not for me, not for the Bible. But being taught and teaching evolution as a fact. And having great degrees. And great knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Yet you don't know God. And you can operate on a human body. Whatever diseases, whatever needs, you can go in and cut and replace and remove and, and add to and fix and whatever the, the human body needs to do. You can go there and do that and you still may not know God. You may not believe that we are fearful, fearfully and wonderfully made by a creator. And you may have all knowledge of evolution. You may have all knowledge of the human body. But if you don't know God, and if you don't go with the gospel, and you die, and you end up in hell for all eternity, you're a fool. With degree. I've been in doctor's room, and their degrees are hanging on the wall. They're small, they're big, they're more than a lot, oh, four walls. Spoken to them, find out they don't believe in God, they don't acknowledge God, you're a fool, and those papers will be nothing. It is a fool, according to the Bible, that will reject God. It is a fool that dies and perishes without God. The fool has said in his heart that there is no God. The unsaved sinner who has heard the gospel, who may have all intelligence, God says, you're a fool. Let's finish the verse. Verse 21. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Now run that ver back verse 18. And let's look at it as far as what I know. And people will probably think, and if you see the videos or if you see me live, that guy is an idiot. That guy is stupid. That guy is a fool. And a lot of people think, he's just yelling at us. Yes. That's exactly what you're just saying. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. The Bible says, absolutely, me, the Bible says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Me, Stanley Hayward, to go to Daytona Beach at the farmer's market and to start yelling at the people about Jesus Christ and start yelling about repenting and start screaming about hell, start lifting up my voice about heaven. You know, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. God says that's foolish. The man, the Stanley, the one that is doing the preaching, that is foolish. You, who goes knocking on doors, yeah, that's foolish. What are you doing at my door? Oh, 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 oh. That's foolish. Hey, look at this piece of paper I found in the bathroom. Oh, oh, oh. Now remember what we said in verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishly. Foolishness. Modern Bibles say the preaching is foolish. No, it's not the preaching. When I preach the gospel, verse 18 and verse 21, 
The message I preach that Jesus saves. The message I preach that there is a hell. The message I preach Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That is not foolish. That is not fool. But the way that God has given me the gift of preaching out loud to people in the public, the fact is, you know, it is me. Me, that's the fool. If I were to stand, Sally, have you ever been a fool? Yes. I stand on the street and I yell out to people that Jesus saved. What I say is not foolish, but what I do is foolish. Imagine getting up every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, and then every midweek service, Wednesday, Thursday. Imagine getting up and listen to a man stand behind a piece of wood and just reading a Bible to you and saying this and saying that. And guess what? And we'll grab it over here. Guess what? The Bible says that is foolish. Now, when that preacher preaches about sin, that preacher preaches about repenting, that preacher preaches about getting right with your life, when that preacher preaches about how to be a husband, how to be a wife, how to be a child, how to be a child of God, how to do right, how to please God, that is not foolish. But standing at that pulpit, standing on the street corner, ringing that doorbell, that is foolish. Get me right now. Get me clear. Not the message. The method. It's foolish. And imagine people with high degrees. We're looking at intelligence here. We're looking at people who, who've got great wisdom, great knowledge, great understanding without God dying, going to hell. And many of them have stood in a stood or sat in a seat in a classroom with the same person up there at the lecture doing the same thing a preacher is doing to foolishness. Now when the guy gets up about evolution, teach about evolution, what he is doing and what he is teaching is foolish in the eyes of God. When a preacher gets up and preaches the Bible, what he is doing is foolish. What he is saying is not foolish. When you do it biblically correct by the God-honoring standard of the Bible, you are a fool, but the message is not a fool. And you don't believe me, just go somewhere where somebody's preaching on the street. Find somebody who's preaching on the street, well, good, the way the Bible says. Okay? Go out in the crowd and act like you're one in the crowd and say, Hey, what do you think about that guy over there yelling? What do you think about that guy over there talking about Jesus? And I guarantee if you're going to ask 100 people, you're going to get somewhere along the line. That guy's a fool. That's foolish. That's stupid. That's idiotic. That's crazy. You're going to get the synonyms of words for a fool. And it's correct. It is correct to be preaching. It is correct to say that guy is a fool for preaching, but it's not the message that's a fool. It's the way God has us to do it. Imagine one time that all the preaching activities, not the message, but the way the gospel has been presented, it, it, it's foolish. Handing out pieces of paper to the gospel, tying it to balloons that float in the air, wrapping them up for uh, Halloween trick or treat bags, knocking on doors. Giving pieces of paper in your bills. That's foolish. Imagine giving someone, besides your check to pay your bill, you're giving a little piece of paper. But the message on that paper, the message that comes out of the mouth, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the, the cross of Jesus Christ, that's not foolish. And modern Bibles say that the message is foolish. The message is not foolish. The person carrying out the message. Imagine John the Baptist. He's walking up, he's got camel hair uh, girdle, and he's eating locusts with honey. I mean, what do you think he looked like? Would you expect the, the Baptist church to welcome him? he get rid of the above problem, but in the eyes of God, what he preached, he presented who? Jesus Christ. That was not foolish. The Bible says that Isaiah walked about, I don't know how, how long, but barefoot and naked. Wasn't that foolish? Wasn't it foolish that Hosea had to go and marry a woman who, who, who was going out and committed whoredoms and adultery? That is foolish. But not the message he had for the children of Israel. So God uses foolish things for his message. 
is not full. Got to get that correct because if you don't have a King James Bible, there's a chance that your Bible says what is preached is foolish. And again, let me say, the method of preaching is foolish, not the message. I mean, I, I've sat under some preachers, they're spitting fire, and they're, they're sweating, and they're turning red, and, and, and man, what's your problem? But if Jesus saves, only by the blood of Jesus Christ you're saved, and you can only be saved by Jesus, get out of hell, believe us, Jesus Christ. The message is not foolish. Now, the guy may be foolish, not the message. Verse 23, chapter 1, verse 23, 1 Corinthians. But we preach Christ crucified. Now, see, we're talking about the message. We're talking about preaching. I preach Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. Unto a Jews a stumbling block. The Jews primarily hate Jesus. They hate the idea that we say he's the Messiah. We hate the idea, uh, he hates the idea, they hate the idea that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. They're trying to keep their traditions, they're trying to keep their law, they're trying to keep the holiness of, of God the Father, Jehovah, and that they are the people, which they are still the people, they are still under God the Father, they're still of Jehovah, they're still of the nation of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but the preaching of Jesus Christ angers them. And throughout the book of Acts, the Jews have persecuted the, the apostles, the disciples, and the Christians. They hate it. And unto the Greeks, foolishness. Go to anybody who's a Gentile, who is not a Jew, and preach the gospel, bring them the gospel, show them the gospel, read them the gospel, hand them a piece of paper about the gospel. And they're primary, most of the Gentiles are going to say, this is stupid. You believe that guy over there? He takes his family every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, and then the midweek service, he goes to church. Man, I'm at the ball game. I, I, I am drinking my beer. I am, I'm trying to get this girl over there and re shipping and receiving. That guy's going to church. That is stupid. And you want to know what else? He, he gives his money to that church. That preacher, all they do is they preach about money, money, money. That's, that guy gives his money to the church. And then he goes out and, and he passes out this stupid little piece of paper about Jesus and and what they think you do for Jesus. They think the life that you live for Jesus, that you're a Jesus freak, you're holier than thou. How dare you tell me how to live, you know? They think you're foolish. And when they do that, they are going to the scriptures. God has already told you how they're going to react. And when I, every once in a while I get somebody come up to me, you know, you're stupid, that's foolish. I will say, thank you very much, you confirmed the Bible. No walk away shaking their head like They have no idea that they confirmed what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 1. And if you're in a public ministry, any type of public ministry, and you are called a fool, remember 1 Corinthians 1. God already told you. They will think you fool, not the message. You. I you ever see these people, they go to these ball games, they get their face all painted up, they get their hair all wild, they just love their sports team, and rah, 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 they just, they look foolish. And that's coming into the BBS, uh, uh, just, just as crazy as the world. But they have no message. You know, uh, this, this team from Cleveland, yeah, what's their message? Win, win, win. Oh, they lost. What a great message. What a foolish message. A bunch of guys fighting for a stupid ball. That's their message. They are foolish and their message is foolish. Stand on the street corner. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Man, you are foolish. But that message has hope. That message has life. That message can save me. Unless you got a modern Bible. So, the Jews are going to reject you, and the Gentiles are going to reject you. 
So don't go out there saying, oh, I'm going to win the whole city for Jesus. That's foolish. You got a false hope. Broad is the way that leads to destruction and straight is the gate that leads to life. Verse 25, chapter 1. Because the foolishness of God. Now think about it. If God had any foolishness, What would be what would be a foolishness of God? Sending men going out to preach the gospel. I believe with my heart through the Bible, I am an ordained man of God to stand in the street corner and preach to the people. And God said, I and what I do and what every street preacher that does it right and correctly, what they do, that is foolish. That's the foolishness of God. Not the message. I want to get that straight. Not the message. But God having a man stand behind a pulpit. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, that's foolish. Not the message. Not the message. Noah's somewhere by the ark. The Bible says Noah preached righteousness. And it was also foolish for him to build that ark when it never ever rained. Come on, everybody, get this ark. It's going to rain. It's going to storm. They've never seen rain before. Man, you old fool, get down off there and get down here and make a living. Yeah, start, this guy talking to God, he's going to have rain. And, wow, look at all these animals. Oh, well, hey, no, you're a fool up there, Noah. And his family got in, God shut the door, and they survived. And the world perished foolishness because they wouldn't listen to the preacher. I guarantee they called Noah a fool, stupid, idiot, whatever, you know, the language they had, how to say it then. So if God had foolishness, and I believe presenting his gospel, which is not foolish, because the foolishness of God is wiser than man, I'm going to send a man to go knock on the door with a worthwhile a knowledgeable wisdom of knowledge and understanding to acknowledge the holy. I'm going to have him come knocking on your door, which is foolish. But the man that preaches about nuclear physics and how to operate a nuclear reactor or build a nuclear bomb that will destroy people and scare the daylights out of countries is nuclear weapon. And if you don't believe on God, both that and your belief. Your teaching, your educator, your your education is foolish, and your means is foolish. And God is wiser. And God's wiser than all that. And the weakness of God, if God had any weakness, is stronger than man. Man, excuse me. I don't think God has any weakness. But this but Paul implies if he had weakness. That weakness would be much stronger than what man's great, you know, this man can lift all these weights, lift all these weights, and he can pull a train with his teeth, and nonsense. The weakness of God, God giving a little seed to a sparrow. Here, here's your meal for now. <laughs> that does more than these heavy weight lifters and all that other nonsense. And it's possibly, I, I would say, that maybe God did have foolish. He sends out us to preach to the world. But in his wisdom, the message we have is wise. God is so much better than a creation. Chapter 1, verse 27. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confront the wise. I am nothing. I am a, 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 a man that has been born of New London, Connecticut, a place nowhere. I had a vile and wicked childhood. I gave my mother loads of hard time. My mother had loads of hard time by her family. I am not pleased on how I treated my mom. I am not pleased how I lived as a child. and I'm not going to tell you. Not, it's all under the blood, but it was wicked and vile. But I had something in my life that... Today I see. I drove my parents crazy with the loud voice I had. I was always too loud. 
And I grew up in shame, and I grew up in sin, I just grew up in rebellion. And who is Stiley Hayward? You go back to New London, Connecticut, you'll probably find many people, if, if they remember me, if they remember me. That guy was a troublemaker, he was just, they didn't want him around. You won't believe some of the stuff that idiot did. I believe it'd be true. Talk to my mom, and I guarantee she's got some sorry stories about me. To my shame, to my sins that are under the blood of Jesus Christ. I grew up as a fool. I'm nothing. Even today, as a born again, Bible believing Christian, I obey God and still I am nothing. Christ is all. God is all. God has chosen me from New London, Connecticut. Whoever, many of you don't even know where New London, Connecticut is. And I face weekly, I try to. I face people of all education values about Jesus Christ. I have faced a person uh, of little children who are still learning. I have come across people of great learning, of education, of doctors, and confronted them with Jesus Christ. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confront the things which are mighty. I'm weak. I lack faith, and I'm not saying that with pride. I'm not saying that to be happy. It is sorry that I lack faith in God. But God says, listen, I will use you who is foolish. I will use a foolish thing of your loud voice. And you're weak, but you can become strong in God to face all the educated people and uneducated. And you can face those who don't have faith and those who do have great faith. Look at the great and regular preachers and hymn writers. A woman that was blinded by a doctor at a young life had never seen eyesight her entire life in the wonderful hymns that Fanny Crosby has written. Her poems that we sing in churches in 2019. It was foolish for that doctor to cause her eyes to go blind because he didn't know what he was doing from what I read. But was it foolish for Fanny Crosby to sit down and write for God her life story of how she loved God and how God loved her? Absolutely not. A man finds out that his family has been shipwrecked and the ship went down and his family died in the boat crossing the Atlantic. As he gets in a, another boat and he's, he tells the captain, he says, wake me up when we come to that spot that that ship sank where my family sunk and died. And he comes from that and he writes to us, it is well with my soul. Anybody else, that foolish. You're supposed to be rejecting God. You ought to be mad at God for what God done to you. It is well. It is well with my soul. Again, here I am, foolish, sitting in front of a computer, recording to you, and, and trying to get you to know what the Bible says, and people come across this YouTube video, or the SoundCloud audio, they come upon it accidentally, their, their search, you know, uh, it, it accidentally comes up, they hit it, and say, what's that? That guy's an idiot. God says, correct, that guy is an idiot. I say that Stanley Hayward is an idiot. You know why I say I'm an idiot? Because I got saved at 18 years old. I should have got saved at 5 years old. 6 years old. I didn't know enough sense that the Catholic Church was lying to me and my family. I'm the idiot. But God sent his word. That's not fluid. God sent his gospel. That's not fluid. God told me I was going to hell. That's not fluid. I received Jesus Christ as my Savior on April 21st, 1987. In my grandmother's living room. That's not fluid. I want the man, Joe Casual, that witnessed to me, coming out, wasting his Saturday afternoon to come to talk to some punk that he doesn't even know what he's going to have. Maybe he's going to reject Jesus. Maybe he's going to get mad at him. He had no idea how I was going to react. Is it foolish to come over and talk to some punk kid out of a Bible? But when he talked to me about Jesus, talked to me about salvation, talked about hell, that wasn't foolish.
I don't know, and I could be wrong, but I don't think there's any really educated, great educated men that God used. I don't think uh, Darwin was used by God for anything. I don't think by uh, Albert Einstein was used by God. I don't think Donald Trump is being used by God. I just probably lost some people there. I don't think any U.S. president has really stood up for God. Any of them. I have not read any documented evidence or heard out of my ear any U.S. president get up before the media, get up before the people of the United States and say, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. I've never heard any president say that. Show me the record. Show me black and white written down a piece of paper that, or show me a video clip, true, that can be proven that the president said that and I'll believe. you got to give me evidence. I have it. And don't give me a roundabout in the tongue, round the bushes, over the corner, to the field, over grandma's house we go. That could be implied maybe due to the fact is that if you really read between the lines that he really did say that. Don't give me that. Give me a man that has outspokenly said that Jesus Christ is the way. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus Christ is the light. Absolutely. Without no roundabout and I'm trying to upset anybody. I don't think God used any f famous people. I think there are people who were who were low. I think people who were able to be used by God and they fell away. They backslided to become famous. Many of your colored women singers that went into Motown, that went into to be popular by albums and cassette tapes, remember what those were, many of those colored women came out of Baptist churches and were singing in a choir, singing openly before the church for Jesus Christ, and they sold out their talents for the world. And God never used them ever again. That's a shame. That is foolish. When God gives you a talent and you use it for the world, that's foolish. When God has given you a loud mouth and you use that loud mouth to proclaim the gospel, God says, I like that. The world says, you're a fool. Correct. First Corinthians chapter 1. Thank you. Uh, I think we're going to do, I think we're going to stop right here. First Corinthians 2.14. I think this goes along what we've been doing First Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 2.14, but the natural man, unsaved, born of a woman, gets pain, gets sorrow, gets upset, has love, goes to work, may have a family, may know how to drive, may know how to put money into a bus, knows how to use a telephone, doesn't know how to use a telephone, has hair, don't have hair, man or woman, whatever race. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. An unsaved man does not get the gifts, does not get the knowledge of the Holy Spirit. No man that rejects Jesus Christ can say he has the Spirit of God or the Holy Spirit. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. The unsaved natural man, the things of God are foolish. You have this spirit creature that gives you love, joy, and peace. My, my booze gives me that. My blue and red pills take care of that. My therapist takes care of me. You got somebody you don't even see. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Give me my little play toys. Give me my little sport car. Give me, you know. The very fact that God and the Jesus Christ that you are worshiped, that you are saved by, the gospel that God's told you to go to all the world and, and preach to your friends, your neighbors, and your family, and the people of the world say you are a fool. And so is your God. Don't think everybody loves Jesus. I tell you right now, people tell me that everybody loves Jesus. I'll tell you in your face, you've never publicly witnessed about Jesus Christ. Never, not even once. You
You will be rejected. You will be an outcast. Your family, your even Christians will think you are weird and stupid. And, oh, you're going to the extreme. Well, you're not to take that literal. Stay away from that family. They got the, you know, they got a disease. They got a disease of calling studying the Word of God. That's what I got. So what we've looked at today, again, we didn't go too far. Let's get this straight. Now, if you cut this video and cut it up in pieces and, and do what you do, do to, to change it, this is what I'm saying. I know what I say, and God knows what I say, so if you splice and cut, whatever. The delivery of the message, the deliverer of the message is foolish. Knocking on someone's door, spending your afternoon for God, spending your morning for God, giving all your time for God, raising your children for God in the eyes of the world and some Christians. That is stupid. That is so foolish. I'm glad we don't do that. And God says, I agree with them. As a matter of fact, when they do call you stupid, they do call you fools, and they give you those looks, and, you, and they, they, like you need some serious mental help. God said in 1 Corinthians 1, yes, that's how they're going to react. That's how they always reacted to my preachers, my prophets, the men of God I said. Some of them they killed. But when you preach God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, when you preach Jehovah, when you preach Jesus Christ, not the other Jesus, but Jesus Christ, the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again the third day, according to the scripture that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No other way to the Father except by Jesus Christ. When you preach that message, when you tell them how to be saved, you tell them there's a heaven and hell and no purgatory. When you tell them Allah is a phony, Mary can't do nothing. When you tell them the truth, God says, that's not cool. And there are some modern Bibles out there that will say the message is foolish. You need to get rid of that Bible and get yourself a King James Bible. They'll say the preaching of the cross is foolish. They are foolish. And their message in their Bible, modern Bible, is foolish. But not the message of God in His true word. That's not foolish. And any man who rejects the gospel, however it is delivered to him, if it's delivered to him in a biblical fashion, in a biblical way, approved by God. And if that man dies and goes to hell, God says, fool. And while you live this life on this earth, God says, the fool has said in his heart that there's no God. I got Allah. You ain't got no God. I got the Pope. You ain't got no God. I got a Jesus who's not God. You ain't got no God. I've got, we're going to have aliens. They ain't got no God. Well, we come from India. You ain't got no gods and you ain't got no food. And you know what? 40 minutes I've been teaching about the fool. And God says, you know that, that YouTube? You know what people are going to say about this YouTube? People come across, hey, it's fool as that guy. Yep. But everything I said about the fool, everything I said not to be a fool, everything about the conduct of how people react to the message, all that is not fool. Absolutely not. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved.